Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Galactic Versus. The series where we take entities or factions from two different universes, put them head to head, and try to predict which one would come out on top. Today we got what I think will be a very fun episode, because it's one that you guys have been requesting basically since I started this series. We're taking two masters of biology, the Yu Zhang Vong from the Star Wars Expanded Universe and the Flood from the Halo Universe. Specifically, we're going to try to predict whether the Yu Zhang Vong in their home galaxy and at the peak of their power could survive a flood infestation. If you guys don't know much about either of these factions, don't worry, I'm going to explain both of them in depth, explain their power, their technology, how they operate, and all of that before we do the actual matchup. If you do end up enjoying this video, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a like, and go down to the comment section, let me know who you think would have won, why, and of course, any future matchups that you'd like to see in this series. If you guys want to get further involved in the community, you can follow me on Twitter, where I tweet quite regularly about the channel and my personal life, or you can join the Discord, where almost every night I put future video ideas up for a vote and let you the community decide on what you want to see. Anyway back to the video content. As I said we're taking the flood from Halo and putting them against the Yu Zhang Vong. Let's now set the scene by taking an in-depth look at each faction. The Yu Zhang Vong were one of the if not the most serious threats faced by the Star Wars universe in Star Wars Legend. The Vong first invaded the Star Wars galaxy about 25 years after the Battle of Yavin. However, they did have some contact with the galaxy beforehand. All of this, however, is not especially important because, as I said at the beginning of the video, we're taking the Yu Zhang Vong at the height of their power. By the time of the Yu Zhang Vong War, they were refugees. They had basically exhausted all of the resources within their own galaxy, had been depleted by civil wars, and were now on the hunt for a new homeland. With that being said, it's probably important to actually talk about the history of the Vong, at least in a brief sense. The Vong obviously come from a galaxy separate from the main one in the Star Wars universe. Their galaxy does seem to be a little bit smaller, a little bit less populated, but that may just be because we don't know as much information about it. Regardless, the Vong did face some enemies within their own galaxy. We know of, for example, both the Salentium and the Abominor. Information about these two factions isn't really readily known, but we do know that they did at some point have a conflict with the Vong in which the Vong won and drove both of them from the galaxy. And really, for a long time, the Vong would be the dominant force within their galaxy. They enslaved some races like the Chazarak, and they murdered anything else that got in their way. However, both the Yu Zhang Vong as a species and their home galaxy was devastated in what is known as the Kremlevian War, which was basically a war among the various factions and castes within the Yu Zhang Vong. It's not clear how, but this war devastated much of the galaxy and destroyed the Yu Zhang Vong's homeworld, drastically weakening the species and causing them to invade the Star Wars galaxy. In today's battle, we're going to be taking the Yu Zhang Vong before they were devastated by the Kremlevian War. They're also going to be united as a species against this new flood threat. At this point, that also means that the Yu Zhang Vong would likely still have their connection with the Force, although I am not certain of this, and I'm not exactly sure how attuned to the Force the Yu Zhang Vong were before the Kremlevian War, so I'm not really going to consider that totally in today's video. It's also not really clear to me how large the Yu Zhang Vong galaxy was, but there were most likely millions of inhabited planets, if not billions or trillions. Regardless, I don't think the size will be super important here when facing a flood threat. That's because, as I'll get to in a few minutes, I think that this battle really comes down to whether the Yu Zhang Vong can somehow protect themselves biologically from the flood threat. Arguably, if there was any species in the Star Wars galaxy that could do so, it would be the Yu Zhang Vong. However, if the Vong are unable to protect themselves, they will be extra vulnerable to the threat posed by the Flood. That's because the Yu Zhang Vong have a fear and a hatred of mechanical technology. The Yu Zhang Vong rely strictly on biological technology. Everything from day-to-day -day transportation to weaponry is all biological. The race is extremely advanced and really in some ways on par with the technology that we see in the Star Wars galaxy. So the Vong are obviously masters of biological engineering. Specifically, the Yu Zhang Vong were very skilled at both growing biological technology and incorporating already existing organic technology to suit their needs. 
For example, the Yuzang Vong made use of creatures known as Dovin Basils. They could do a variety of things, including generating gravity to suck the shield off of spaceships and deflect blasters, and were just generally a nuisance that the New Republic had a very difficult time dealing with. And I mean, these weren't just some ordinary creatures, these could generate small black holes, and the Yuzang Vong used them to their full potential. Everything the Yuzang Vong used was organic, from their 100 kilometer long world ships to their coral skipper starfighters. Basically, the Vong either grew, trained, or otherwise created biologically every single piece of technology that they used, period. Going against these masters of biology are one of the most devastating biological forms in science fiction, the Flood from Halo. Put simply, the Flood are an all-consuming parasite. They operate based on a single consciousness with the sole purpose of gathering more biomass. The Flood are interesting, they infect individuals and after doing so gain not only their physical body but also access to things like their memories, their intelligence, and their general skill. Each consumed or assimilated individual adds to the general intelligence and sophistication of the Flood consciousness. Everything that I've kind of explained so far gives the Flood a sort of domino effect. Their purpose is to collect as much sentient organic matter as possible. The more matter they collect and the more consciousness that they add to their collective, the smarter, the more sophisticated, and ultimately the more deadly they become. Flood outbreaks generally occur in several stages. At the beginning you have a few flood spores which, hopefully for the flood at least, can infect organic beings. The goal then becomes to further propagate the species by creating new infection forms and infecting more biomass. At this point, the central consciousness controlling the flood infection will not be very intelligent and will really operate only on a basic level based on survival instinct. The flood will also probably start collecting bodies to form a grave mind. A grave mind is like a central intelligence for the flood. With a proto grave mind and later a full grave mind formed, the flood is able to actually think more creatively and to operate on a somewhat strategic and intelligent level. The more biological matter and more importantly, consciousness consumed by the flood, the smarter the grave mind becomes. And once a planet's worth of biological material has been collected, the grave mind forms what is called a key mind. Grave minds themselves are very intelligent. Key minds, however, are even more so. And during the Forerunner Flood War, Key mines were able to strategically operate at the same level as high powered forerunner artificial intelligence. Key mines are also typically able to corrupt artificial intelligence and gain access to precursor technology. However, given that this battle takes place in the Yuzang Vong galaxy, neither of those things will be very important. However, what is important is that the flood can operate when fully developed at a very high level and can control each individual flood member with a high degree of precision and effectiveness. Due to the self-propagating nature of the flood, a full outbreak is almost impossible to stop. The Forerunner, even with all of their technology, were unable to defeat the Flood by conventional means during the Forerunner Flood War. In the events of Halo 3, we see that the only way to stop a very small Flood outbreak is to glass half of an entire continent, which is obviously a very serious measure. So now that we have a good understanding of both of these factions, the question is this. A small outbreak of the Flood starts in the Yuzang Vong galaxy. Are the Yuzang Vong able to stave off full assimilation by the Flood? Just purely based on conventional warfare, I think the Yuzang Vong are in very big trouble. They rely on biological technology almost completely. This means that almost everything they use will be susceptible to the Flood. It is true that the Flood generally prefer to infest only things with a certain level of sentience and only things with a certain level of neural capacity. However, we do see in both the Halo games and the literature just how a large-scale Flood infestation actually has a huge impact on the environment and basically impacts everything biological. I mean, on a small level we're talking about plants and trees dying, on a larger level we're talking about an atmosphere being completely contaminated and inhospitable. I really think that should the infection reach a sufficient level, the effects on using long technology are going to be fairly significant. The question then is will the infection actually be able to reach this level? I think the answer is quite clearly yes. Individually, the Yu Zhang Vong are unquestionably very, very powerful fighters, and I mean, they gave the New Republic and the rest of the Star Wars galaxy a very difficult time. But there's nothing inherent in Yu Zhang Vong biology itself which would prevent them from being infected by the flood virus. I mean, given a sizable outbreak, even warriors like Spartans were susceptible to infection. Eventually, Yu Zhang Vong will will be infected, especially if they aren't anticipating an outbreak. I mean, even Forerunner, who had suits 
many times more powerful than that of Master Chief or other Spartans of modern day Halo, could fall to infection forms. So I mean, there's only so much that an individual can do to fight the outbreak. Also, given that at the time of the infection, control of the Yuzang Vong galaxy would have been under one empire, the Yuzang Vong Empire, movement between planets and movement by individuals would probably have been fairly common. That means that the infection should be able to propagate fairly quickly. It's just like when we talked about the Yuzang Vong versus the Star Wars galaxy generally. Both faster than light travel and faster than light travelers are very common, so the infection is going to spread quickly and it's going to start up in a few different planets at once. Through conventional means, the Vong are going to struggle to control the infection. They do have impressive technology, and they have things like the Yogon's core maneuver to crash a moon into a planet and do serious damage, but the problem is that the infection is going to spread through the galaxy very quickly, and by the time the Vong realizes what's happening, it's going to be very hard to adapt to it. We saw that the Forerunner's best tool in trying to stop the flood infection and to deal with the multiple infections at once was AI. The Vong's real lack of not only artificial intelligence, but machinery generally will make this battle very difficult. And I keep talking about conventional methods of fighting the flood. I think that the Yuzang Vong generally is going to have a more difficult time than the Star Wars universe. Their reliance on organic and biological technology, in this case, will actually be a huge downfall and will be a huge detriment when compared to say someone like the Forerunner. It means that the flood will spread more quickly and that any large infestations will also have the secondary effect of seriously hampering Vong technology. The usual domino effect of the flood will be even more pronounced in this scenario. Really, the only thing that the Yuzang Vong can possibly hope to do to defeat the flood is to develop some sort of cure. I mentioned earlier that this would be an important question, and it's really the thing that decides this matchup. Even with their expertise in biological technology, I do not believe that the Yuzang Vong will be able to develop a cure for the flood. In the Halo universe, even with the advanced forerunners and with the advanced ancient humanity, no species ever developed a cure for the flood. This is despite the fact that the forerunners themselves were very advanced when it comes to manipulating organic technology. The first thing you'll notice is that the forerunners basically conquered any sort of illness is against them and they could live for an essentially indefinite amount of time. The Forerunner were actually so advanced that they could basically extract a person's genes and biological memory and imprint it into some sort of device. They could also basically turn biological things into data and after the firing of the halo rings remotely reseeded most of the galaxy. Their pure technological sophistication is also seen in their creation of megastructures, things like the Ark, the various halos, Dyson Sphere, and manipulation of even space-time and gravity. The Vong are advanced, but even in their most specialized area, aren't close to comparing to the Forerunners, and the Forerunners themselves weren't even close to developing a cure for the Flood. Ancient humanity, who was also very advanced, thought that they had developed a cure, but that turned out to be a misunderstanding, and the Flood retreated based on their own will. The Yuzang Vong have so many weaknesses against the Flood, and their one area of expertise, and that is of course altering genetics and organic technology was also one displayed by the forerunners who were markedly more advanced. No civilization has survived a full-scale multi-planetary flood infestation and I think that that's what will happen in this battle because I don't think that the Yuzang Vong will have any way of stopping the infestation early. I think it will propagate fairly quickly and I think before the Vong know what to do it will be completely overwhelmed. Once the flood get access to things like key mines you'll be able to strategically outthink the Yuzang Vong on an extremely high level, and this will speed up what I believe to be the inevitable, a Yu Zhang Vong loss in this match. I think that the Flood take this 9.5 times out of 10. I think it'll be easier for the Flood in the Yu Zhang Vong universe than it would be for them in the regular Star Wars universe. The use of organic technology is not going to help the Vong in any sort of way, it's actually going to hurt them, and I don't think that they're advanced enough to actually develop a cure. That, however, is just my opinion. I would love to hear what you guys think. Take a second right now and vote in the upper right hand corner. Also, let me know down in the comment section what you thought of this episode, who you think would win, and of course, what you'd like to see next time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, hope you've enjoyed my videos over the past few days. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, may the force be with you.